Hi! Today's project is a crochet pod holder brought to you by Yoshe Crochet. I made this pod holder using star stitches in the round. Crocheting in the round creates a thick fabric that's perfect for the demands of the kitchen. I will be showing you two different options to get slightly different looks. The first way gives you a thinner line that edges the star stitches. You can see the way it frames those star stitches beautifully. The second way, or the alternative way, which is also my favorite, makes that edge pop out. Both options make for a beautiful fabric. In this project, I'm using 100% cotton yarn and an H hook. When making pot holders, it's important to use the right type of yarn. The two best yarns are 100% cotton or wool. Cotton is washable and won't melt. Wool is harder to clean because it might felt after washing, but it won't melt and is self-extinguishing. Other yarns are not recommended for this type of project. So let's get started. We are going to begin with a chain that's long enough for a full round from front to back. Our chain doesn't have to be too precise. We'll make the chain long enough that when it's folded over, it will be the width we want the pot holder to be. I just eyeball it until I get a length that looks good when folded over. When I first start, I don't worry too much about how many star stitches I'll end up with. I get what I get as long as I end up with the width I like. After that first round of star stitches, I count how many I have and then I make sure I have that same amount in the following rounds. Okay, you should have a good size chain. Even though we'll be working in the round for a project, we will start with a row of half double crochets. To start, place a half double crochet in the second chain from the hook. And then place the half double crochet in each chain across until we get to the end of the row. Here we are at the end of the row of our half double crochet, and I'm going to show you how to join it. I turn my rook around and I bring the ends together. Then, in the top two loops, I make a slip stitch. Now is a good time to sew the tail from the beginning of the chain and close up my work. Now that we've joined our two ends together, we are ready to crochet in the round. Let me show you how to begin the star stitch round. Okay, let's chain three, one, two, three, and now we're going to pick up a total of five more loops. Let's go into the next stitch there, pick up a loop, go into the next one there, pick up a loop, and we will go into this big stretched one out right here at the base of our chain and pick up a loop. And now we're going to pick up another loop in the back loop of that stitch at the top. So let's go ahead in that top back loop, let's insert the hook and pull up a loop. Once again in the back loop, pull up a loop. And we have a total of six. We're going to yarn over and pull through all six yarn over and pull through. And this is our first method that I'm showing you. So let's repeat that. Okay, so now we're going to yarn over and go, or not yarn over, just go through that hole right there and pick up a loop. And now we're going to go through that first little stitch there. It can be a little fiddly. You might have to work your way through it and pick up a loop. Now we'll go through that big stretched out hole there and pick up a loop. And now we'll go once again in that back loop only, pick up a loop, back loop only, pick up a loop, yarn over and pull through all three, yarn over and pull through. Okay, and that lets you see how the little ridge pops up there. Looks very nice. This is what it looks like in the actual finished project. Frames the star stitches very nicely. Now I'm going to show you the second method. And this is my favorite method that I like to use. 
So I'm leaving the four loops on the hook because that's exactly the same for both methods. We stretch out the work a little bit. Now this time, instead of going in that back loop, we're going to go behind the back loop. If you turn your work a little bit, you can see that back loop. And you bring up a loop and do it once again. You see right behind. So it's not the normal back loop, it's the one behind it. So go behind and pick up your loop, yarn over, and pull through all six. I'm going to show it to you one more time. Now go down, same way for both methods at this point. Through that big one. And now this is where it changes. We go behind, behind those two top ones. Insert and bring up our loop one more time so that we have a total of six loops on our hook. Yarn over and pull through all six. And we close it up. And now you see that it pops out a little bit more. You see a little bit more of that stitch there. And this is what it looks like in the finished project. This is my favorite method, but you go ahead and pick your favorite method and repeat the process all the way to the end of the round. Okay, here we are at the end of our round doing our last star stitch cluster here. And I'm going to pick up the remaining loops and I'm going to go in the back loop, the very back loop, the one behind the back loop. Because I prefer this method, I like the way it pops out. I'm going to finish it off. I'm going to yarn over and pull through all six loops. Normally at this point I would yarn over and pull through the loop, but I'm not going to do that this time. We're not going to do that. We're going to instead go to the top two stitches of the beginning round. We're going to close up our round and we're going to slip stitch. And that closes off our round. Okay. Also, this is a good time, if you haven't done so already, to sew up that bottom where we began. So just go ahead and take an embroidery needle and close it up if you'd like at this point. And now we're going to slip stitch over into the hole of that first star cluster that we started. And we're going to chain two. Now we're going to make a half double crochet in the same spot. And we're going to make two half double crochets in every one of those little holes or eyelets all the way around. So go ahead and do that and finish up your round. Okay, so now we're at the end of our round of half double crochets. We're going to do our last one in that very beginning or ending row, however you want to look at it. We're going to make two half double crochets there. Now we're going to close off our round by slip stitching into that hole right there. Sometimes I insert it into the stitch, but mostly I like to do it in the hole. It makes it a little bit easier to work with. So go ahead and insert your hook into the hole and slip stitch. And now we're going to start the next round of our star stitches. You can see here a completed round takes two rounds of crochet. One with the cluster and two half double crochets and that gives you a completed star stitch. So now we're going to start our next round of, com of star stitches. So we're going to chain three and we're going to pick up our loops. Our fourth loop is going to be picked up in that hole right there at the base of our chain. And our next loop is going to be in the back loop of that very same hole, the top of that very same hole. Okay, so let's go ahead and pick up our loop. Can be a little hard to get through it sometimes. And now the method I chose, chose was to go behind that back loop. But you go ahead and put it in whichever loop that you chose to do it to begin with. So if you went in that back loop, go ahead there. But like I said, I like going in that back loop. And now the process is exactly the same as that very first round. 
So go ahead and make as many rounds, completed rounds, as you need for your pot holder. I ended up with eight complete rounds, which would be a total of 16 rounds. So go ahead and finish your work and I will show you how to finish off when you're done. I'm at the end of my final round and I'm going to slip stitch my round closed. So you can see that I've completed all my star stitch rounds. Now I'm slip stitching and at this point I decide if I want to add an additional round of half double crochets or if I want to stop right there. So let me show you an example of stopping right there. So you can see that there is no additional half double crochet round. It's just the reverse single crochet that's an edging there. Here's an example where I did add an additional round and you can see that it makes it a little bit taller. So let's go ahead and start without that additional half double crochet round and let me show you how we will edge it. Okay, so here we are at the end. We're going to go do a reverse single crochet and you're going to insert your hook in that back loop of that front group and then we're going to go in the back loop of that back one. Yarn over, bring it through and take it off just like a single crochet. I'm going to do it again, back loop, back loop, bring it through, yarn over, take it off the hook. Now we're going to do that all the way across, all the way down, and around, and back up. And then we're going to close it off and make a loop at the end. Now you could do this edging, or you can make your own edging. There's virtually an endless amount of edges you can make for this pot holder. If you wanted, you can make some shells. You can just do a regular single crochet all the way around, pretty much any way you want to do it. But if you do want to do the reverse single crochet, go ahead and finish it up, and I'll show you how to do that loop at the end of this round. Okay, so we're at the end of our round of reverse single crochets. So my edging is complete for this pot holder. And now I'm just going to add a little loop here at the end. You could simply just make a chain the length that you would like. But sometimes I get a little complicated. And in this case, I wanted to make my chain a little thicker. So I'm going to make a single crochet and then just keep piggybacking single crochets on top of each other. So I twist my yarn or turn my work and make more single crochets. But like I said, if you would just like to make a regular chain, you can. And I'll keep doing this till the end. Okay, so I finished the chain that I want here. And now I'm ready to cut and sew it on. And our work is done, our pot holder is done. And here are both versions of today's project, brought to you by Yoshe Crochet. Thank you for joining me today.